So, what's the difference between the German Shepherd and the Belgian Malinois? Well, in today's video, we're going to find out. Welcome to the Canine Show. If we're just meeting, my name's Will. I'm a behaviorist and on this channel, I make videos just like this one to educate people about the amazing dog breeds that we all love. So if you are new here, please consider subscribing. Now, we've been spending a lot of time recently comparing the various different Mastiff type breeds, but one of the most common questions I get every time I make one of those videos is just what's the difference between a German Shepherd and a Belgian Malinois for people trying to choose between the two. So we're going to dedicate this whole video to really breaking down the entire differences between these two breeds, and we'll start off with their looks, which is the easy place to start. But as always, I really want to stress that you should never choose a dog solely based on their looks, and we'll discuss all the other important things after this. So it's really important that you stick around all the way to the end of this video to ensure you really have a deep understanding of the differences of the two breeds. Now we should also note that Belgian Malinois are actually one of four different types of Belgian Shepherd. The main differences of the four are their coats, but as we're looking at the Malinois that's where we'll start and they are a medium sized incredibly athletic dog and I mean incredibly athletic. They may very well be the perfect combination for all round athleticism, combining insane speed, ungodly endurance and still managing incredible levels of power. They can grow up to uh, 66 centimeters tall and weigh around 30 kilos kilos to around 25 inches or 70 pounds for my American friends. So in the world of guardian breeds, they're actually one of the smaller breeds, but we'll get on to why they're still so commonly used as guardians later on. The German Shepherd is larger than the Belgian Malinois, but still would be considered a medium to large type dog, contrary to the popular belief of them being huge dogs. They grow a similar height, uh, if not just a smidge taller, but they can weigh 40 kilograms or 90 pounds, so a good 10 kilos or 20 pounds or so heavier than the Belgian Malinois, which you can really see when you put them side to side. The German Shepherd is is definitely the bulkier of the two breeds. The German Shepherd also has that famous sloping top line that falls away towards the dog's back legs. This was originally bred to give them explosive power in their lunges forward, but nowadays just often causes quite severe hip issues. But other than the weight differences and the sloping top line, it's somewhat easy to forgive people that might get the two breeds mixed up or just think that a Malinois might be a female German Shepherd. However, both have, as both do have that perfect scissor bite and long shepherd style muzzles with pointy triangular ears and both have that infamous colouring that can be very similar. However, it is worth noting that Malinois actually have very consistent coats, but the German Shepherd actually comes in two varieties with a short and a long haired variety with a huge amount of colours ranging from the traditional black and tan all the way to pure white. Now that we've covered their looks, we'll move on to their origins as these can give us huge insights into why they are the way we see them today. And we'll start with the German Shepherd, and on the topic of the German Shepherd, before we go, we'll have a quick fact, and that's the fact that many people still refer to them as Alsatians. This is in fact exactly the same breed, and people started referring to them as Alsatians back after World War I, as people simply didn't want anything to do with Germany. And it wasn't until 1977 where it was officially changed back to the German Shepherd, however many people still refer to them as Alsatians to this day. But back to their actual history, and the German Shepherd we see today was first developed in Germany at the end of the 18th century by a cavalry captain named Max von Stefnitz. He spent 35 years developing and promoting the breed to produce a trustworthy, reliable and handsome dog. He encouraged the police force in his native country of Germany to use German Shepherds, and during World War I, thousands of these dogs became part of the German army. German Shepherds were originally bred as herding dogs and their job was to act as guardians for their large flocks. But the demand for herding dogs decreased over time, which is where Max von Stefnitz stepped in to promote the breed's other skills while at the same time honing specific traits, namely a dog's stamina, strength, speed, intelligence and eagerness to please and work. Now, like I mentioned earlier, the Malinois is a type of Belgian Shepherd, so we'll be looking at the Belgian Shepherd's history to learn more about the dog we see today. 
The Belgian Shepherd is thought to be an ancient breed that dates back to the Middle Ages. The breed was developed in the late 1800s in Belgium, with the four varieties being created in different regions of the country. A Belgian breed club was set up in the late 1800s, and by 1891, the four varieties of Belgian Shepherd were given their own individual breed standards, which were established by a Belgian vet. These handsome dogs remained popular for many years and they were even used during World War I and II to carry messages to and from the front line as well as pulling ambulance carts and machine gun carts. Over time, the breed has become really well known in other parts of the world, really including here in the UK. However, all four varieties of Belgian Shepherd Dog are classed as a single breed by the Kennel Club here, although other kennel clubs around the world usually have them as separate individual breeds, and this includes my friends over in America and their kennel club. Now we know the differences in their looks and the differences in their histories, we can take a look at the definitely more important things that we need to consider when learning about a breed and choosing if they're right for us. And those main things are temperament, energy levels, exercise requirements, trainability, as well as health and life expectancy, which is where we'll start. And we'll start with a German Shepherd who has a life expectancy of nine to 12 years and often suffer from hip and elbow dysplasia, pituitary dwarfism, exocrine, pancreatic insufficiencies, degenerative myelopathy, uh, panostatus, bloat and gastric torsion, uh, and epilepsy. Whereas the Belgian Malinois has a life expectancy of around 10 to 14 14 years and just really suffers from hip dysplasia, eye issues, epilepsy, sensitivity to anaesthetics, dermatitis and bloat. Now the German Shepherd's temperament is renowned for their intelligence, alertness and loyalty. Being a working dog, German Shepherds need lots of mental stimulation to be truly happy and well balanced dogs when they are in a home environment because they are used to and love working all day every day. They have a deep need to protect which is why they're one of the most commonly used guard dogs in the world but they're also known to be extremely excessive barkers as they will sound the alarm for the slightest thing. They tend to get on well with other animals if raised with them and they're usually good around children being very patient with them. Now the Belgian Malinois were also bred as working dogs and their temperament still heavily reflects this. They excel at all their jobs whether it's herding or guarding flocks or working alongside humans in most roles that require any form of obedience. It is very important for these intelligent and energetic dogs to be kept busy, especially in the home environment or they really are known to become very destructive if they become so bored so quickly, which is made worse by the fact that they suffer from severe separation anxiety uh, and their desire to be with and working with people is so strong. They have extremely strong prey drives and will chase anything that runs or flees from them. They are known to be extreme barkers as well. However, they do form deep bonds with their family and that does include children, but it's common behavioral problem with Malinois for them to try and herd children if not well trained and well exercised. And this will include them nipping at heels. This problem behaviour is so common with behaviourists called to help owners with Malinois that they are very rarely recommended as family companions, as most families cannot really dedicate the time required to keep them busy and happy. I'm not going to spend much time on intelligence and trainability, as if you don't already know, it's simply incredible. Both dogs are hyper intelligent, with the German Shepherd being considered the smarter of the two. However, both are extremely keen to work and eager to please, which makes training them to an extremely high level very doable, especially for experienced trainers. And it's this reason why you see so many of them used all around the world in police and military roles, uh, and a huge variety of purposes within that, as well as dominating the obedience world alongside other hyper trainable breeds like the Border Collie. What I really want to focus on here is that although these dogs are able to be trained to extreme levels, it doesn't mean that they are easy dogs to own, and are rarely are they suggested for inexperienced or first time owners. This is because they have such a high desire to work and their energy levels are through the roof. If you work a dog all day, this need is naturally fulfilled, for, but for a companion role, it means they need huge amounts of exercise and mental stimulation. Both need at least two hours 
of exercise and then a bunch of mental stimulation on top of that. And the Malinois in particular probably needs even more than that every day for them to even somewhat settle down in the home environment. So to summarize, both breeds are somewhat similar in terms of looks and both have deep working lineages, which means they are both hyper trainable, but both need huge amounts of exercise and mental stimulation, which means they're not necessarily suitable for a wide variety of people. However, if you lead a very active lifestyle and your dog can accompany with you every day, then they can make incredible outdoor companions. And when they're finally tired, they will be gentle, loving guardians at home. Now you can click top left to see all the contests in my current 32 breed knockout tournament to determine the ultimate guard dog breed for first time owners, where both the German Shepherd and the Belgian Malinois are competing. And you can click bottom left for another one of my videos I think you might enjoy. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss another episode of The Canine Show.